Robert Altman says that filmmaking is a chance to live many lifetimes. And while I completely agree, it's also a chance to visit many places, to be invited into many homes, to meet many people, and to participate in many cultural rituals and personal stories. The film spectator or the audience, along with all of the creators of film, the artists, such as the writers, directors, editors, and actors, are all standing in the middle of the surrounding world of accessible knowledge, historical events, personal experiences, as well as all of the influential arts. Any individual artist is first a spectator and uses all that is consciously and unconsciously gathered in their work. Therefore, what is created is informed by what the artist or filmmaker has seen, read, heard about from family members, touched, smelled, and even experienced in their dreams. Films use most, if not all, of the other arts. And so how will China offer, offer us its other arts, literature, music, theater, and dance, for example? How will they be incorporated into films? And as we think about global markets, how will China's national identity and global influence be embedded in the stories they tell? What film genres will China prefer? What film genres will consumers want? What combinations of genres will directors make the best use of? In Western terms, China is part of Asia, but what does that mean? What does that mean to China and what does that mean to the rest of the globe? One of my Chinese students made an important point in class regarding race and geography, saying that most people consider Chinese, Japanese, and Korean lumped into the same group, into the same race. But in fact, we know that the continent called Asia has 44 distinct different countries, distinctly different cultures, traditions, generating distinctly different cultural stories, but yet all present distinctly human stories.